A Visual Analysis of Disney's Cinderella by Kristen, Aisha, Juliet, and Oscar. Our presentation is focused on Disney's version of Cinderella, which was released in 1950. In our historical overview, we focused on Peralt's Cinderella or the Little Glass Slipper, Basile's Cinderella Cat, Grimm's Cinderella, and Afanasiv's Vasilis the Beautiful. For our visual analysis, we picked the scene from Disney's Cinderella where Cinderella and the prince are dancing at the ball. They get separated from the crowd and share a moment where they are the only two in the room. We discuss the human body, the color, the space, and the lines that are in the scene and how they are interpreted. To begin our historical overview, we will start with Peralt's variant, the Little Glass Slipper, also known as Cinderella. The first variant we are going to discuss is the French version of Cinderella, or the Little Glass Slipper, that was written by Charles Perrault in 1697. This variant was very similar to Disney's movie version of Cinderella, which was released in 1950. In Perrault's version, the main character's name is actually Cendrillon. Cinderella's father, who never dies in Perrault's version, marries her evil stepmother who had two horrible daughters that tormented Cinderella. Cinderella wasn't allowed to go to the ball, so when the stepmother and the stepsisters left, fairy godmother shows up and saves the day. She danced with the prince at the ball, and in Peralt's version, they also ate food, and Cinderella kindly gave some fruit to her stepsisters who did not recognize her. In Peralt's version, the ball was a multiple-day event. On the last night, as Cinderella was leaving, to beat the midnight curfew, she dropped her slipper, and the prince had every woman in the town try it on. It fit Cinderella. The main difference between the two was the endings. In Disney's version, the glass slipper breaks right before Cinderella tries to fit in it. This is when she presents the other slipper and shows that it fits. In Peralt's version, the glass slipper fits Cinderella, and then she pulls out the other slipper that she has and puts it on. Fairy Godmother then shows up and changes her rags that she is wearing into a beautiful gown. Cinderella is kind and forgiving and not only brings her stepsisters to live in the palace with her, She also marries them off. In this section about Cinderella, this variant tells about Basile's version called Cinderella Cat. It was published in 1634 and was under the name Cenerentola, and it was in a book called Lo Conto de Licunte, which meant the story of stories which was a set of folk tales um, that was constructed by Basile. With the differences between the version in the film and with Basile's version, you can tell that Cezola was a child with personality. She did not um, have this sweet, kind-hearted nature that was known for Cinderella like it was in the film, and that she killed her first stepmother, which is quite a shock, and (coughs) was tricked by her governess in order to have her governess instead marry her father. And when talking about the glass slipper that is so such a classic symbol of the film, it was more of a Patton, which in that time was known as a Chian Yellow, and those were known as simple mules, or in this case, like a cork pump. So you wouldn't really say that she had a glass slipper. And when talking about Prince Charming, he was not a prince more than he was just a king, and he had held a feast every day for everyone in the court to gather instead like a ball like when it was in the film so overall they the variation does stray away from how the film retold the story Hi everyone, I'm Juliet Daniel, and I'm going to be talking about the Grimm's version of Cinderella, which is the German version, and it was made in 1857, and it's more recent than the other versions, and it was heavily influenced by vocal tellings of the story, and then 
Um, some similarities to the Disney version of Cinderella is that both stories have a stepmother and two stepsisters. Cinderella is forced to do all the chores. Cinderella is told that if she finishes her impossible chores, she can go to the ball. And instead of having a godmother, the birds are the helper for Cinderella. And Cinderella isn't able to go to the ball because of her clothes. She loses one of her slippers at the ball. And then the stepsisters try on the shoe. And Cinderella at the end marries the prince. Um, some differences though from the original from Grimm's version of the story is that um, Cinderella's helpers are birds instead of the godmother, so there's no, like, fairy in this version, but there is still animal helpers that that get her to the ball. Um, the chores that Cinderella has to do is a little bit different. Um, the stepmother throws lentils into the fireplace and asks Cinderella to pick them out in a set amount of time. And Cinderella gets to help from the birds to uh, get all the lentils out. And she does it faster than the godmother thought she could. So she then again throws more lentils into the fire twice as much. And then she asks Cinderella to do it in half as half the amount of time yet. Cinderella calls for the helpers, and then they help her finish it in even less time. But, of course, like, the stepmother is wasn't planning on letting her go to begin with, so she refuses to let Cinderella go, even though she finished the, the chore. Um, and Cinderella is sad, but she says, like, a chant to the tree, and it, like... The birds bring her, uh, like, dresses and slippers, and so she's able to go to the ball. And I believe the ball in this version is over, like, three nights instead of one night, so that's also different from the Cinderella version. And um, when the sisters try on the slippers, they cut off parts of their feet in order to make their feet foot fit into the slipper and the prince thinks that they're his princess or like his true lover because like they fit into it but the birds notice like blood trickling down their feet and alert the prince that this is not his girl <laughs> essentially so like he kicks them off he goes back and like finds out Cinderella is the true one after she puts on the slipper and then the birds even confirm that she's the true one to him so he knows that that is his lover and then um at the very end when they get married the stepsisters they go to the wedding um to like get on her good side but instead the birds they pick out their eyes for like telling lies and stuff so that's also very interesting. Just in general, the Grimm's version is very, very gory compared to the other stories. How's it going, everyone? I am Oscar Flores. I will be covering Valesha the Beautiful by Alexander Asfaniv. It's the Russian interpretation of Cinderella. Uh, let me start off with kind of a brief synopsis of the story. So Valesha is the daughter to a merchant who remarries with a, a lady that has two daughters. The two daughters and the stepmother are very nasty towards Valesha, make her work um, and do chores. And one day they were instructed to put up all the lights, pull, turn off all the lights but one candle in the house that they live in, which in this case is a hut in the woods because the stepmother sold the house that they used to live in when the father was away. And one of the stepsisters put out the candle. So Valesha was instructed to go get some light at Baba Yaga's. 
in Baba Yaga's, on her way to Baba Yaga's, Valisha saw three horsemen riding towards her house, which were one in all white, one in all red, and one in all black. And then she gets to Baba Yaga's house and notices a fence built completely out of human bones and is terrified and sees all the skulls with glowing eyes. Baba Yaga notices her, takes her in, and says to get the light. She must work for it. If not, she will be uh, eaten up by her, Baba Yaga. And this whole time, she has a doll that was given to her by her mother before she passed away that is blessed, that will help her make the right decision when she needs help. And in this case, the doll was telling Valisha to do all the work that Baba Yaga asked for. You know, long story short, she does all the work. And one night, Baba Yaga asked how Cinderella, or excuse me, Valisha is doing all this work and completing it because they're kind of outlandish tasks. And Valisha tells her that she is blessed. So Baba Yaga freaks out because she doesn't want anybody blessed in her house or around her. Gives her a lantern with some burning coals. And Valisha returns home. And in the midst of doing this, she, the skull actually incinerates to ashes her stepsister and her stepmother. So she buries the skull in the yard and then goes to the city where she meets an old lady and that takes her in. And as a gesture of good faith and as a thank you, she creates a linen for her because the doll helps her create a, um, what are they called? A, I want to say sewing mill, but in that, in that case, a, uh, a mill and, and helps her create the linen. When she presents the linen to the old lady that took her in, the lady says, this is way too beautiful for me to even use this must be given to the czar and the czar in this case is the prince slash king and so the old lady departs to go give this linen to the czar and Valisha returns home and then once she does that the czar falls in love with the linen asks the old lady to make him shirts and the old lady says I cannot for I'm not the one who made the linen, and none of the czar's seamstresses can create shirts out of this linen in fear of messing it up. So they find the creator, in this case, Valesha. And when the czar sees Valesha's beauty, says, no, you will not make my shirts. You will be my wife. And then marries Valesha, becoming the happily ever after tale. So, with through this quick overview of Valesha the Beautiful, you see some commonalities with Walt Disney's Cinderella. And the commonality overall is the same theme. It's, you know, it's Valesha in this case being mistreated and, you know, tattered up just like Cinderella was, was blessed by an old lady and Cinderella was her fairy godmother in this case was Baba Yaga and then put in a situation where they get the recognition from a royal member that um, you know ends up being their husband and they live happily ever after there's some key points I want to touch on as you can see here on the slide one is the evil stepmother and stepsister so they kind of came about in the same exact way in both stories the father remarries and the stepmother and stepsister are jealous and ashamed of themselves and self-conscious and jealous of the beauty of Cinderella and Valesha. Uh, they force you know Valesha and Cinderella to work until they're all tattered up um, and they both got a helpers so what I mean by helpers is Valesha has the doll that she got from her mother 
and Cinderella has all the little animals from the forest that help her throughout the story. And then the next bullet you see received a blessing slash wish. So in Cinderella, she received the wish of going to the ball, getting the dress. But in Valacia's story, she received the blessing of getting this light and actually incinerating her stepmother and her stepsisters who were causing her a great deal of pain. And then got to hit uh, the happily ever after. So, you know, they both ended up with the prince or the czar. Now, I, there's not a lot of talking points as much as in the commonalities as there is in the differences. The differences is where Valicia the Beautiful really becomes its own independent story. So, the real difference with Valicia and Cinderella is how they achieve the same theme but they achieve it in different ways. Um, meaning, Valacia never really intended to meet the Tsar, never really intended to go to any sort of royal function, but still ended up with royalty. Now, Cinderella wanted to attend the ball and wanted to, you know, shoot her hand in marrying the prince, but she was not allowed with her stepmother and stepsisters. But at the end, it kind of overall achieved the same theme. Also, another key point that we'll cover on later is how they were helped. So let's just start off with the evil stepmother and stepsisters being killed. That's one of the big differences in this story compared to Walt Disney's. Um, they were incinerated by the skull that Baba Yaga gave Valesha. And in Walt Disney's, they're just beat out by Cinderella at the end. Um, the helper was a doll. Now, this doll was blessed by her Valesha's mother before she passed away and was constantly with her compared to the little animals that helped Cinderella when um, she was going to the ball and on top of that the fairy godmother so there was only one helper compared to Cinderella's multiple different helpers um, and then received a blessing or slash wish from the protagonist so um, Baba Yaga is kind of viewed as a protagonist not the main protagonist but one of them considering that she threatens Valacia's life and makes her work uh, but at the end gives her the blessing of the skull that later on incinerates her stepmother and stepsisters freeing Valacia from their tyranny and oppression and then it's uh, created something so great that it got royal recognition as a byproduct got married. So what I mean by that is that Valacia never intended to have any sort of representation with the czar, never intended of meeting him or being with him. Uh, it was that she was trying to do a kind thing for a woman that took her in and then later got sought after to make shirts, but recognized for her beauty and for her overall state and told by the czar that they will be married together not like Cinderella where she wants to go meet the prince at the ball and then the prince falls in love with her at the ball and searches for her afterwards he the czar is searching for Valacia because he wants some shirts made and doesn't have any idea of how beautiful she is and that's really where the main differences come in with Valacia the Beautiful compared to Cinderella.
Next, we'll go into our visual analysis where we picked a scene from Disney's Cinderella where Cinderella and the prince are dancing at the ball. They get separated from the crowd and share a moment where they are the only two in the room. We'll discuss the human body, the colors, the space, and the lines that are in the scene and how they are interpreted. When visually analyzing a scene, one of the first things I notice is the body language between the characters. When looking at the prince and Cinderella in this image, it is clear that there is a connection between the two. Cinderella is wearing a ball gown that would be typical of this time. The bottom is full of tulle and has ruffles, while the top is more tightly fitting and has a full capped shoulder. The prince is wearing very royal attire. It is clear that this is a formal event. His outfit reminds me of one that we might see at a royal wedding. When we look at this image, we notice that the prince is leaning in towards Cinderella. I believe his feet are facing towards her and he is also facing towards her. One hand is holding Cinderella's hand, while the other is wrapped around her waist. This shows that he has a clear interest in Cinderella and his full attention is on her. Cinderella appears to be smiling and is looking directly into the prince's eyes. Her head also appears to be leaning in towards the prince. The interesting thing is that she is holding her dress far away from the prince. And yes, I realize she is dancing and she obviously does not want to get her dress stepped on, but this could also suggest that part of her mind is somewhere else other than in that moment. In the back of her mind, she knows that she will have to leave soon, so maybe this is partially so she can turn and walk away if midnight were to suddenly hit. But this could also just mean that Cinderella is opening up herself to the prince and she isn't trying to hide or protect her body with her dress or with her arms. When speaking about the color in the scene that is featured in the slide, you can tell that the background and the foreground of this intimate scene between Prince Charming and Cinderella, you could tell that they really wanted to make the foreground be more focused on both of them rather than having the whole scenery be of one shade rather so you could be more focused on them and when it comes to her dress you can tell that it was a, a lot darker than it usually is when it's under a more light tone because in order for her dress to contrast with the dark background and so she wouldn't be able to be blended i guess you could say with the foreground being very dark and then same goes for Prince Charming's attire his is um, also of a darker shade rather than it being a lighter white and lighter red color for his suit and pants because so you can tell uh, the contrast between how they look against the dark back the uh, dark foreground and the light background and this whole all these colors of being more dark and more darker shades of blue and light pink um, kind of overall sets the tone of an intimate scene between the two characters and tell how romantic the scene is supposed to be. Their skin tone was also, as you can see in the scene, was being more of a darker shade because you can so you can see their faces more properly. Hi, Oscar Flores again. So now we're going to cover the lines. Cinderella's lines, the prince's lines, the floor, the background, and the drapes and the pots. So let's start at Cinderella's lines. Cinderella has a very rounded off figure to her. All her lines are curved, all her dress curves are curved. Um, there's nothing really sharp about her, which kind of gives her a more feminine and softer look to her. It kind of gives her a soft, inviting look, whereas the prince's lines are very sharp and very postured. As you can tell on his shoulders, they almost look like 90 degree angles. And on top of that, his coattail is a sharp cut off kind of giving him a tough, a masculine look. Also, note the line going down his pant leg. It kind of gives you a reference point that his other leg, it's dead straight. If it wasn't for him dancing, he would have perfect posture like a proper man slash prince should. Then we move to the floor. 
the floor kind of plays an insignificant part. The only th- floor lines that matter are the tile lines that lead you to the back. The background kind of plays a secondary part. The background is dimly lit, has straight vertical lines running up it that kind of give you the an idea of how big this ballroom is. And, but the background plays a, a part with the lighting. The lighting is dimly lit, and you see Cinderella and the prince in the forefront carrying all the weight of the picture in the forefront. And thus kind of the lines of the floor take you to the background and the background takes you straight to Cinderella and the prince in this picture. And then we go move to the drapes and the pots. Now they don't play a huge part. They just kind of break up the room considering that everything is straight lines and straight vertical or horizontal lines. They kind of break up the lines by being, you know, sharp and curved. And you see some ovals. They just kind of add a a new t- a texture to the room. And it kind of shows the high society aspect of it being so ordinate in the handles. But the drapes, they play kind of a, a part because it makes it look like Cinderella and the prince are all the way in the front of the room almost as if they're by a window and you're looking into the ballroom and the drapes are curved off you know very soft only in the corner and shadowed in the back but they just kind of give you the aspect that this ginormous ballroom is only filled with cinderella and the prince and they're off in their little corner in their own world because they're so madly in love with each other For space, it goes hand in hand with line. The lines help us determine the depth of the room and the proximity of where everything lies, which is the space. To start, the proximity between this prince to Cinderella is very close. Our identifier of this is the small gap between their faces. We can also tell this because the prince has his arm around Cinderella and appears to be pulling her closer. This identifies to us that the prince and this and Cinderella are in love and that they only have eyes for each other. The second is the proximity of the prince and Cinderella to the viewer. We, the viewer, are farther away from them. This is identified by how we can see their whole bodies from head to toe. The drapery on the left side of the screen also shows this as well because it is the closest object to us, which gives the appearance as if we are peering out at them. The last point I want to talk about is the depth of the room. The depth is given away by the floor tiles, which show us how grand this ballroom is. The vases of the plants also show us the depth of the room as well. We see a vase to the right, which appears to be at the same distance of the prince and Cinderella. We didn't see a vase to the left, which is much smaller and appears farther away. This is to help the viewer identify that this room is an enormous space. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed hearing about the different variations of Cinderella, the history behind them, and the comparisons from them to Walt Disney Cinderella. We also hope you enjoyed our visual analysis of this scene from Walt Disney Cinderella. Thank you and have a wonderful day.